anyway, kind of dive into field a little bit from there. Um, so what is field? I can show you a little bit here. Um, field is first and foremost a development environment. So if you're familiar with um, Eclipse, or if you're familiar, do most of you guys develop in Java or C++ or? Yeah, some of them are in Python. Okay. So um, largely field is based around Java and Python. Uh, it has a, a scripting language. Uh, I guess it uses Jython for the most part. Um, and I, I would rapidly come in and out of my depth with regards to, you know, it's always fun to talk about somebody else's software and, and uh, wish Mark was here so I could really lean on him. So uh, if I say anything glaringly wrong from a, a developer's perspective, I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, uh, it is, is largely based on Java as its, as its core platform. And uh, from there, one of the exciting things about it is a very interactive platform so that as you work inside a field, and you may have noticed when I was uh, had a field actually open here in the background, it has um, everything that's going on is not only you know, instantly interp uh, interpreted, but the, there, there's a very, very blurry line in between the code and the output. So uh, if you've ever heard the, of, of, you know, kind of live coding where you're kind of working on things and changing things and interacting with things, you know, all in real time, that's one of the fundamental precepts and one of the fundamental concepts of the field is that it's all about exploration and trying things out and seeing how, you know, things interact with one another and what the results are immediately. So you'll see even in my code here, for instance, which is you know, just some simple, uh, actually processing code. Does anyone here use processing? Another great open source project, right? Um, so one of the weird things or, or interesting things you see, this is, this is processing inside of field. So um, Mark is a big fan, he's you know, certainly, uh, rather than reinvent everything, uh, he's a big fan more of, of Maybe stealing is the wrong word. Um, scaffolding. Hijacking, scaffolding, you know, all these wonderful you know, terms. Uh, where he, cr he creates in field lots of bridges to other environments, uh, whether it be Max MSP uh, or processing or uh, closure or you know, all these sorts of other environments, especially now that we're you know, working with data from other sources, um, that we can wrap and kind of add uh, capabilities for, of other platforms to field. <coughs> And the nice thing about it is as you add them, because of the architecture, it also becomes interactive. So these tools themselves become even more interactive than they were when they, when they first uh, you know, were designed. So for instance, in here, I'm changing my processing code with a slider that's in, you know, a graphical element embedded in the code. Um, and it's executing every time I move the slider here. So um, you know, literally, like I was saying, the, the, the line is very, very blurry in between uh, coding and the output and you know the, the code and and everything. You can even in some examples you'll see the uh, uh, whether it be the this is called the what's it called the the, the what's it called again? It's not the field. It's the sketch or the oh you keep changing names on me. Um, you know where you place. Like, all right, I'm embarrass myself on YouTube. Um, Code is organized into these boxes here. So, uh, other than just having you know simple routines where you know, we're used to kind of uh, procedurally writing code, you actually create graphical elements that have code in them or visual elements. Um, and in there, you can actually have code that executes. And so you say, well, okay, how does how do you interact with that then? You know, well, okay, you know, code runs when you interact with it there, but there's also within this within the field here, there's timelines that can be animated that cause code to execute visually. So you can really arrange your code. So as a visual environment, it goes a lot further than the typical visual programming environment where you know you set the box and connections and then it just sort of runs. This is really something that you're interacting with as, as you move along. Um, maybe it's best to, I'm going to run uh, one of Mark's demonstrations because he's just says better job than, than I do. And it's also kind of sped up so you can sort of see uh, things happen as, as, they, uh, as they move around here. 
So you can see he's you know, creating graphic elements in here and then adding the code that he wants to put behind them uh, in the, the other box here. So this is the field environment. And from here, field does have its own uh, built-in graphics system, but you can also use you know, typical OpenGL type of things. You can you know, use uh, uh, other environments that you kind of uh, uh, glean on, like processing and so on. Um, so it's very, very, very flexible. It has a uh, you know, good P-line system, uh, so you, you can do splines, you can do curves, you can, you know, uh, all sorts of, you know, limited by sort of the imagination. Uh, so here he is changing codes of lines, creating multiple lines. Uh, what else is he going to do in here? Subdivide curves. I mean, the, the, you can also do things interacting with text and then taking uh, path-based text and dissecting that and, and taking things apart and so on. interesting as he's changing in, in he, things in here it is modifying the code so you're, you have this constant back and forth between the visual elements and the coded elements as well a little crazy uh, but in a good way of course so again you can you can imagine you know if you're looking at a data set and you say well okay you know is this important is that important you're trying to really figure out you know, gather some kind of meaning from just a you know, massive amount of data. As you're doing things, and you're looking at you know, tons and tons of graphs and charts and, and you know, stacking it different ways. The idea is to get to the point where you are manipulating and things, you're not waiting for something, you know, grab a data set, you run a, a visualization on it, oh, you look at it, and maybe you spin it around, but you know, really to have that, that um, what Professor Fox refers to as ad, ad, abduction, as opposed to induction, so you sort of this continual process of discovery and investigation uh, back and forth. So probably, I'm getting close to 15 minutes at this point, and I've, I've rambled a, a bunch. Uh, so now the pitch. All right, so, so what are we looking for? What are the opportunities with, with Field? Field is open source. So first and foremost, I just encourage everyone to kind of check it out. Go to openendedgroup.com and download it and, and see. Um, you'll see on here, I'm running everything on a Mac, but we recently, Mark uh, and the community, and he, he has been building a community uh, quite well at this point, uh, it got ported to Ubuntu, to Linux, so uh, we now have Linux support. Don't yet have Windows support. Some people have asked about it. Um, it'd be great to, you know, if someone wants to get involved in field development, um, that would be phenomenal. I mean, that'd be a, a great project. It's other ways to get involved in uh, your independent projects. You can certainly you know, do field development on your own, but also working with people, whether it be at MPAC or Templates World or even other universities and other things. It's a you know, great jumping off point. Um, and also, you know, we're so uh, further extending the environment. You know, if you know of tools that you want to try to get to work with Field, because you want to, you know, you found some limitation in some other development environment that, uh, or some other tool set work, you know, workflow that you have, you want to try that in Field. You know, that's a great project as well. Um, just testing it, developing your own software using Field as a development platform would be, uh, you know, also. A, a, great thing from my perspective because it helps exercise out field. Every time I do you know, one of these talks and try to you know, draw up some quick processing, I'm reminded that this is an alpha version of the software, or alpha 12 right now. You refers to beta in there, but somehow they're always named alpha you know, versions I'm, I'm getting. Um, and it is, you know, it can definitely use more involvement, more exercising, more, uh, more of a community. So there's about 15 minutes of rambling on stuff at MPAC and Field and myself and any anything I left out, any directions I could have gone in there. Give me some of it, probably some of the games. I, I think I mentioned that earlier on. I'm not sure if that was when the, the pizza issue was, was happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, this like I said, mentioned the, the other opportunity uh, is also in in more the uh, immersive environments and that's also a big uh, RPI initiative right now with the CCC, the uh, Culture, Cognition, and Community. It's, a, it's kind of a new center that's being discussed. Uh, this idea of using immersive environments for learning and teaching. Uh, and part of that, you know, we're trying to figure out, okay, how do we create these immersive environments? So, you know, talking to the gaming science and simulation, you know, trying to work out, you know, engines and things in there. So we're trying to get a group of people together, and if someone wants to just be involved in that, um, to start talking about the type of tools that, that are necessary for those type of initiatives and then people to actually code them. You know, if you are familiar with the game engine or, or 
want to learn a game engine or want to learn about you know, authoring for game engines or, or things like that, uh, that would also be uh, you know, something that would be great. And it is, you know, all these things are fairly high profile projects if you guys are looking for something that, uh, you know, I, I guess they, they do tend to get noticed. Um, yeah, so that is what uh, the next, so coming fall, they are offering Mandarin as a two credit, uh, three credit class because the foreign language was was cut off the program. Now, using this immersive environment, they are building a, they are building a course and uh, Colin is helping with the website development and we are doing something how ARCAS can contribute to that. More importantly, this will be a high impact. If, if you are successful, then more glory to ARCAS. We get noticed. Yeah. So, hopefully it's a win across the board for everybody involved getting into new and uncharted territories and exciting stuff. You know, it's kind of uh, fun to apply the, these kind of things to, to new areas. Do you guys have any questions or? Yeah, the, uh, the stairway visualization mm -hmm. that was on there before, is there like a filter you can apply for that to make it not look exceedingly creepy? Uh, <laughs> well, it's art. So uh, they go for a, a, a very specific look. Um, I think if you look at, you know, at the piece as a whole, you'll find that you know, the reason it looks the way it does, um, it, it, you know, it's, uh, they have been doing a, a kind of a dark series lately. Uh, a lot of the, the work has been uh, sort of, you know, there's another piece called Ghost Catching, and there's, they, you know, I, I think I said it to them, you know, there's kind of a dark period right now, we would discuss some other, some new stuff, the kind of uh, memories that have been sort of left behind and things. Um, but uh, it's an interesting uh, observation. And also with the, uh, could you bring up the, uh, the field thing again real quick? The, uh, the, s no, the, uh, the, the demo you were doing. Uh, the, uh, I think this, my, okay, that, this one? Yeah, I was wondering if on, uh, the one that's, uh, Pro Se or whatever, there. Yeah, the slider bar seems like it's a little bit out of sync with, uh, yeah, it's, with the value it's, there. Like I said, it's, it's alpha. Gotcha. Uh, so, oh, and it is sort of hijacking what, uh, Processing is doing so. Is it is it 100% yet? Nope. You know it's oh. it's uh, on the, it's still in development. You know, I don't know if it'll ever be out of development, but uh, on the box you clicked, is that gray splotch significant? The gray splotch. This one? Yes. If you yeah. yeah that if it's kind of hard to see in the projector here, but that's actually a ghosted P, okay. and that means this particular box is bridging to processing. Okay. This is a native field box. And this is a, a bridged box over processing. As you had other environments or other boxes that have bridges to other uh, other tools, plugins, and so on, you normally you'd see you know the first initial or some type of uh, visual indicator to say yeah that that was special. So, yeah. And uh, where's your repo at? Uh, you mean where's the source? Yeah, there's source. 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 You can either download the binaries or download the source code, yeah. and it is on one of the pages that we've ever on there. So it's yeah, really easy. Once you get to openendedgroup.com, right. uh, pretty easy to find. So if the students can find uh, the, the, the movies somewhere in the internet and they cannot find my office number, then I don't, I'm not going to tell them my office number. All the clues on the breadcrumb trail are there. Yep. Any others? All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah,